Angela Sachs is known for exploring the minds of people with unusual medical conditions and making their travails accessible to the mainstream. His work with patients suffering from the sleep disease and cephalitis lethargica was made into the Academy Award-winning film, Awakenings. His latest book deals with several islands in Micronesia and the unusual patterns of illness that exist there. It is called The Island of the Colorblind, and I am very pleased, as always, to have Oliver Sacks back at this table. Welcome back. Lovely to be here again. Well, the last time you were here, you talked about writing this book. Um, you did the I? the process of writing the book. Right. You did. You did. That, that, I asked, what were you working on, and you said this. Tell me how you discovered this and what it is here. Because, in fact, this is two books, but let's talk about colorblindness first. Um... Well, I, I've always sort of loved islands, and uh, sometimes, uh, uh, just as you can have unusual animals and plants on islands, you may have an unusual disease. And um, I've been interested in color blindness. You know, in the last book, I wrote about a man, uh, an artist who had lost all color vision after seeing normally, and I wondered what it would, might be like to be born without any and have no idea of color. And when I found out that there was this little island of the Pacific where really quite a large minority of people never see color, only see in black and white, I felt I had to go. What percentage? About 10%, maybe a little less, although a third of the population are, are carriers. It's a genetic disease, a recessive, and two carriers have to meet. And what is it you're interested in? Um, I'm interested in the way people see the world, or construct the world, and, uh, and the differences. I wondered what sort of world people would live in or make if they didn't see color. We feel color is so important. And um, although in my own photography days, I was a, a black and white photographer. And so I wanted to see what life was like for them. And what did you find out? Um, the loss of color didn't seem to, to matter that much. I think their perception of other visual qualities of brightness and tone and texture and shape and contour, mo movement, was sort of heightened. Um, they were a bit dazzled in the, in the daytime, but their night vision was, was remarkable. They, they really are the, the nocturnal people on the island. And um, I wish I could have stayed longer. I think one, you know, one would really need to spend a year in such a place and be part of the community and learn the language. But um, it, um, I, I got the feeling that one could live in a very rich and complete world without color. And indeed, I sometimes felt they regarded us as sort of hung up with, you know, with color. We, we were wasting a lot of time talking about it, this, this, this irrelevant thing sort of smeared on the surface of the world instead of paying attention to the to the real essence here is an excerpt from a bbc documentary in which uh, we see you handing out sunglasses to uh, some children roll tape much okay. we had brought specially designed dark glasses as the single most effective thing we could do for the colorblind I think glasses like this could be a great help. It's actually an option whenever it's really see light like this. If it can become sort of acceptable and attractive, the thing to do, it'll become a trademark of Pingalat. You know, you, will, you won't be part of the inset unless you have these. The type of color blindness Knut shares with the Pingalapees is an inherited condition. It occurs in the general population perhaps only once in every 40,000 births. But here on Pingalap, one in 12 of the population is totally colorblind. Um, will you continue to go back? Um, I would certainly like to go back. Uh, actually, I've just had some disquieting news about Pingalap that there are no longer any flights there. There were some the Pacific missionary missionaries used to fly there. The island has been very cut off indeed for, for a few months. But I would like to go back and see whether, whether our visit had any resonances. I don't know whether, say, the dark glasses we bought are, are still used. And um, the, uh, 
I would like to spend longer there. This book, The Island of the Colorblind, is also is really three books. I mean, if you count the footnotes as a book. <laughs> uh, tell me about the other part of the book. Um, um, then I'll show the audience at home what these footnotes look like, but go ahead. Uh, well, I, um, although the second part of the book, which is about Guam and right. Rota, um, come second, in fact, I went there first, and it started for me with a phone call at the end of 92, um, telling me about um, Guam. There's a strange disease which is endemic there, probably has been for a couple of hundred years, uh, much more serious than the color blindness. It's really a fatal mm -hmm. degenerative disease of the nervous system. And, Akin um, to Parkinson's disease? Uh, one form of it yeah. can uh, is a kin is a form of Parkinsonism, and the, some of the patients look very much like those in Awakenings, which was a reason I was um, you know, I was consulted. Um, I'd heard of this disease 30 years ago when I was a resident, but then I hadn't heard anything more, and I thought it had vanished. But I uh, I'd never been to the South Seas, I'd never seen this disease, and another special reason I was interested is that it had been ascribed to the eating of the seas of the cycads, these very primitive trees which are all over Guam and which, um, and which I have a great fondness for. Mm -hmm. And so what with this strange disease and my favorite plant, I mean, this was an, an irresistible conjunction and I... And, I and what does this favorite plant do to you? Uh, what is it? It turns me on. <laughs> um, it's... Um, yes, it... Yeah. Um, oh, it turned on means? Uh, uh, it excites me by its ancientness, yeah. its, its rarity, its mystery, its beauty, the fact that it was around long before the dinosaurs, the fact that it's a great survivor. Um, I think cycads are marvelous plants. They, they used to be all over the world. They're just tropical and subtropical now. What happened? Um, uh, flowering plants emerged, you know, these, these impertinent Johnny-come-latelys, <laughs> and, you know, and the nice balance of the Mesozoic went. I, I, I've sort of got a, a taste for, for the Mesozoic. This is your um, other books, Migraine, Awakening, A Leg to Stand on, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, Seeing Voices, and Anthropologist on Mars. Um, when do you write? Um, Late night, morning, in between um, other work? I'm, I have no systematic time. Uh, I am, um, with this, um, it sort of, um, really two years after the island, I started dreaming of the island. I think my unconscious was telling me, write about Put us. It down. And, um, but I, I write at odd times. What do you do with your life these days? Well, I still see my regular patients. Right. I still go to hospitals. Um, I still teach. You still live on City Island? I still live on City Island, although I have a little office here mm. in, in, in the village. Right. And um, every so often I, I have an exotic trip like this. You talked about sort of the harshness of a school that you went to when you were, what, four, five, six years old? Six, six. In London, yes? Uh -huh. Well, well in, in the Midlands. In the, in we Midlands, were yeah. Evacuated. What impact it had on who you are? Um, well, um, you know, four million of us, four million children in England were evacuated and really. During the war. In the, in the, in the beginning of the right. war, torn away from the families. Um, and put in various places. Sometimes this was a happy experience, sometimes it, it, it wasn't. Um, I think for me it was a very dislocating experience because I didn't see my parents for a long time. The school was sort of harsh, um, and uh, I think we were all a little, um, little traumatized. Um, it, uh, I think this may be one reason why I when I came back, I turned to the natural world of sort of animals and plants and, uh, and the sciences because there seemed to be something, a sort of stability there, which, um, which was perhaps missing, missing on the human side. I don't know. Um, uh, I, um, we evacuees sometimes recognize one another. We, really? it, um, maybe we never quite belong. Something about the sense of belonging, I think, has probably been, or maybe bonding has been shaken. Um, I, uh, but uh, that's my generation. Yeah. Uh, what, what are you writing next? 
Um, I have, I have no idea. Well, it will come to you how? Um, it will come to me unexpectedly. I will wake up one morning. Mm -hmm. um, no, um, Pinter w w uh, wrote me a wonderful letter saying how... Harold Pinter? Harold Pinter, yeah. saying he'd read Awakenings in 73, he'd then forgotten it. And then eight years later, he had an odd dream, and he woke up with the first line of a play, which was yeah. based on Awakenings. The first line was, something is happening. Um, one day, something will happen, and <laughs> I will sort of... And you will know. And I'll know. Yeah. I never do, you, do you think of yourself first as what? As a writer, first as a... And when you think of yourself what, in some order of, of how you, what your self-image is. Right. I think of myself as a, I guess, as a traveler. A traveler. Um, perhaps partly into sort of domains yeah. of, of human disease and the human psyche and nervous sy yeah. system, and partly into sort of physical domains. A I man on a journey. Yeah. And it's, it's always a journey. There's a sort of double or triple journey here. There's a journey into disease, a, a journey into the islands, yeah. partly a journey into myself. What is it about islands? Um, they're, they're little worlds. They're complete. They're isolated. Um, everything is very compact. Um, I, uh, I live on an island. I yeah. live on City Island in, in the Bronx. Um, I, well, England is an island. Um, it's, uh, I think it's the idea of a, uh, uh, of a society in miniature, which, which appeals to me. Uh, and also one which is, which is autonomous and which can sort of, in a way, shut the door on the rest of the world. What do you fear? What do I fear? Um, I fear isolation. Islands fear isolation. Uh, Being cut off. Yes. Uh, the... Um, which is what has happened to Pingalap, this yeah. little island yeah. of the colorblind now. Now that there's no transportation there. Yeah. Yeah. The Island of the Colorblind, Oliver Sacks, another book, as you know, an anthropologist on Mars, is just one of the titles of the book, uh, The Awakening, which was Robert De Niro, was a, a wonderful film that, um, based on his work. I thank you very much, as always. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. See you then.